last week we looked at vibration forces and some of the characteristics such as frequency. We talked about how the exciting force, which is often the machine fault, is offset by the stiffness, the damping, and the mass of the machine that we are measuring. This week I want to talk a little bit about amplitude. So we, the frequency, if frequency is the time that it takes for the machine to flex and bend from that state of rest back to its original position, one way and then the other way and then back to uh, the position of rest, that period of time would be the frequency. But how far it actually goes, we can get a lot more information from the machine based on that. Vibration can be measured not only by its frequency and its time, but also by the displacement, the actual physical distance that it changes. It can be measured by the actual velocity or the rate of speed that it's traveling. And it can be measured by the rate of acceleration of the change in direction that it's experiencing as it goes through this sine wave of vibration cycle. I'd like to ask Paul if he could break this down a little bit further and talk about some of the units and what we're looking for when we're measuring these characteristics. Okay, so with displacement, velocity, and acceleration, basically what we're looking at when we measure in those three things, all the same is a way of measuring amplitude of vibration. And so the amplitude, the more greater the amplitude, the more severe the vibration is. And so we can measure amplitude in three different ways. We can measure it in displacement, we can measure it in velocity, and we can measure it in acceleration. And the reason that we measure them in different ways is because some react different, better at certain speeds than others. So for instance, with displacement, we usually measure in displacement below 600 CPM. So slow speed type of equipment. In our case, it would be slow speed below 600 RPM. We measure in displacement. Then when we measure in velocity, generally speed again dictates that between 600 RPM or 600 CPM and 60,000 CPM, we measure in velocity because velocity gives us the uh, best response at that speed. So we get the best signal, we get the best picture, or we get the full response of that machine. Uh, then when we get above 60,000 CPM, uh, fast turning equipment, then we measure an acceleration because that gives the best response. So speed generally dictates what speed that machine, the turning speed that the machine runs at, dictates whether we measure in displacement, whether we measure in velocity, or whether we measure in acceleration. So if we look at this sine wave again, that we look at every week when we do this, and we have our sine wave, well, when we measure in displacement, what we're actually measuring is the full movement of that part. So if you think about vibration, vibration is the back and forth movement of a machine or a machine part from its position of rest. So when we measure in displacement, we're measuring the full movement to the top, down to the full movement of the sine wave at the bottom, and then back to the neutral. So when we measure in displacement, we measure in something called peak to peak. So when we measure, we measure the whole thing from top to bottom. When we measure in displacement, when we measure in displacement, we're measuring in mils. Mils are thousandths of an inch or microns, thousands of a millimeter. So we're either measuring in that, we're measuring below 600 CPM, we're measuring the whole moment, we're measuring in peak to peak, slow speed. And generally, we use displacement when we're balancing something. So when we balance something, displacement. So the full moment from the top, the positive, down to the bottom here. So with displacement, slow speed. When we measure in velocity, generally we measure between 600 and 60,000 CPM. When we measure in velocity, we don't need to measure in peak to peak. We measure from the neutral position to the top. So we measure in peak. So velocity measurement is in peak. Acceleration measurement is in peak. Displacement is in peak to peak. So when you're doing vibration, if you want to change something from peak to peak to peak, you double it, multiply by two. If you want to change something from peak to peak, back to peak, you divide by two. When we're measuring in a displacement, what we're measuring is stress. So how far does that thing actually stress in positive, down to the negative, and back? So we're measuring in stress, we're in displacement. Velocity, what we're measuring, with velocity we measure in peak, not peak to peak, 
When we measure in velocity, we're using inches per second or millimeters per second when we're measuring velocity. And we're measuring between 600 and 60,000 CPM when we're measuring velocity. And so the thing to remember is that if I took a spring mass and took this weight and I just pulled this weight down and so this thing started moving up and down, up and down, up and down like this. Of course, the sine wave would represent one cycle of vibration. So this is at the neutral position or weight. You pull it down, let it go, starts up, makes a sine wave till it goes farthest it can go in the positive direction. Then the weight drops down, drops down, drops down, till it gets to the farthest it can go in the negative direction, then it goes back up. The thing when we measure in velocity is, is that weight changes speed all the time as we measure in velocity. So the whole time through this cycle, as this thing goes up and down, it's actually changing speed. And so if we're thinking about velocity, we're measuring in inches per second, it's to measure that speed change. So if you think about this thing vibrating up and down, as it starts up, it slows down, slows down, slows down, slows down until it gets to the very top of the peak here. And then what happens is it changes direction. So theoretically, for this to change direction, it stops up here. Then as it drops back down, it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, till it gets to its maximum speed at the neutral position, is what we call peak velocity, maximum velocity. Then it slows down, slows down, slows down, till it gets to this one. Theoretically stops, changes direction, till it goes back up. So we, as this changes speed throughout the whole cycle, we have to pick a speed to measure. So we have to have pick a speed for our formulas that you may talk about later. But So we have to pick the speed. So we always pick the maximum velocity and the maximum velocity always occurs right here at the neutral position. So it's always changing speed, maximum velocity at the neutral position. That's the speed that we pick when we're doing our calculation. So that's pretty much for velocity between 600 and 60,000 CPM. We always measure peak velocity. Peak velocity happens here at the neutral position. And so that's pretty much it for velocity. When we measure an acceleration, once again, we're talking about speed. And so we measure above 60,000 CPM when we're measuring acceleration. And when we measure an acceleration, we're not measuring the stress, how far the thing actually moves. We're not measuring the speed that it goes at like in velocity. But when we measure an acceleration, we're measuring how fast this thing changes direction at these peaks. So if you think of acceleration, think about your fighter jet and you're flying in the fighter jet and all of a sudden you make a really sharp turn. What happens is you feel like you're going to keep going in a straight line while the jet makes the turn. Or if you go around in a car or you go around a corner really fast, what happens is your body reacts and you go opposite to the turn. And so what's happening there? And so it's so an acceleration. So what we're doing is we're measuring how fast we make that turn or the impact. So as this thing changes direction, it impacts or there's a shock there. And so what we're measuring when we measure acceleration is those impacts or those shocks, how fast this thing changes direction. And remember the faster it changes direction, the more G forces that it gives off. And so we always measure acceleration in G's, whether it's in the other ones we'll measure in one in metric and one in English, but in acceleration, we always measure in G's. We're measuring how fast we change direction. So when we measure an acceleration, always measure above 60,000 CPM or an acceleration. And when we measure an acceleration, once again, we're only measuring peak. So from the neutral position to the top, we don't care about what's going on below the bottom of the sine wave when we're talking about uh, when we measure an acceleration. Um, another thing that we have to remember too in a vibration is that displacement and um, velocity and acceleration are all kind of related to each other. So they all kind of happen at different spots around the sine wave. So the thing that you have to remember is that when we have peak displacement and peak acceleration, they happen at the two extremes of the sine wave. When displacement and acceleration are always the same, they match up with each other, velocity is always the exact opposite. So when we get to the extremes, 
here in our sine wave, maximum acceleration, maximum displacement, zero velocity. Same thing down here at the bottom, maximum displacement, it's been as far as it's gonna go, change the direction, maximum acceleration, but the velocity, it stopped because it's changed, it has to slow down, stop, and then change direction. When we measure velocity, as I said earlier, maximum velocity happens right here at the neutral position or at the neutral line. So if you think about it, what's displacement gonna be at this line? Is it gonna be bent like this? No. So displacement is gonna be zero at this. So velocity is maximum, displacement is zero. What about acceleration? Is it changing direction up here? That's how we measure acceleration. How fast it makes the turns, we're measuring in G. Is it changing direction when it's at the neutral position? No. So that means that at the neutral position, velocity is gonna be maximum, displacement and acceleration are gonna be zero. So they're always, uh, displacement and acceleration are always the same and uh, velocity is gonna be the opposite of them. So when they're maximum, the displacement and acceleration are maximum, velocity is zero. When velocity is maximum, displacement and acceleration are zero. So they're all kind of related to each other uh, throughout this cycle. And so the thing that you have to remember, these are when you're gonna write your test or whatever, is that below 600 CPM, we measure in displacement. Displacement is measured in mils or microns, and displacement is always measured in peak to peak. In displacement, we're measuring stress. When we measure velocity, velocity is always from 600 CPM to 60,000 CPM, always measured in inches per second or millimeters per second, and what we're measuring is the maximum speed. So we measure that. Uh, and then when we measure acceleration above 60,000 CPM, what we're measuring there is how fast it changes direction. So how fast, so how many Gs? It's always measured in Gs no matter what, and uh, always over 60,000 CPM. That's really interesting hearing about the three different characteristics. Now for the displacement, it makes sense that at lower speeds, we're gonna get the ability to measure that displacement from peak all the way to peak, and it'll give us an actual physical measurement. Um, if that, if we had that large amount of displacement at higher uh, CPM, it really would shake itself to death. It would be such a severe vibration, we wouldn't really be able to see that. For the velocity, it was really, really what stood out to me and what I was thinking about was on the sine wave here, where the line actually kind of curves down, seems to me like the steeper that line will be, the um, higher the rate of velocity. So if, or the, just in general, like the length of the line, if you were to pull that out like a string and measure how long that line is, that's gonna also kind of um, indicate the severity of the vibration when looking at velocity. And for the acceleration, I thought it was, I liked Paul's example there where he talked about uh, the fighter pilot trying to turn the corner and what that looks like. And I always try to relate it to, to um, acceleration and gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And just thinking about what it would look like, what a, high vi what a high acceleration would look like if you were on different planets in the solar system. So for example, when you're on Earth and you throw something, a ball up in the air, it goes up and then it comes back down. But if we were on a larger planet, like let's say we're on like, I don't know, it's a big planet, Saturn, and you threw that up in the, in the air, there's gonna be much higher rate of gravity. So that's gonna go up and it's gonna come back down really fast because the bigger acceleration or the larger the gravity or the more Gs that there are on that planet. So that was really important to me. Um, I'd like to now kind of step a little bit further and ask Paul, where would you use these different, like were some actual examples in industry where you would use displacement versus using acceleration and, and how is that used by a vibration analyst? If we think about a bearing, for instance, so a bearing always has four stages of bearing failure. So it starts out the early stages of bearing failure, really, really high, high frequencies kind of thing. So in the early stages of bearing, so if we look at, we're gonna show our spectrum now instead of our waveform, remember amplitude here, frequency on the bottom. And so when we're, I'm looking for a very, very, very early, early bearing. Well, that early bearing is gonna happen at frequencies that are really high frequencies. So we're talking a couple hundred thousand cycles whatever it may be, but over 60,000 cycles a minute. So the early stages of bearing 
we would look at acceleration. So there's certain uh, uh, trade name kind of things. Uh, some ones called Peak View. There's, uh, what's another one? Uh, Shock View, Pulse View, all these kind of things that these special trademark names for our boxes. And what it is, is they're looking at that high frequency acceleration and they're looking for an early bearing, okay? When I measure in displacement, low speed below 600 RPM, so less than 600 RPM, when I balance something, generally when I'm balancing, I'm in this down here. So I balance, I measure in displacement, is at a slower speed than I'm balancing at, usually down around here somewhere. And with when you think about balancing something, I want that whole movement. So I want all the way to one side and how far it goes all the way to the other side and then back to its position of rest, so the peak to peak. So I measure in displacement for low, low speeds. Acceleration for high frequency things. Another thing that I would look at in acceleration is gear mesh. Gear mesh, I'd look in acceleration. So once again, the speed dictates where we look. So if you think of gear mesh, gear mesh is the RPM of the machine times the number of teeth. So if you had a gear with 100 teeth on it, it's going 1,000 RPM. It's 100,000 CPM you're looking. So way out here above 60,000 cycles. So we would look at gears for that. When we look at velocity, velocities from 600 to 60,000 CPM, Velocity is generally what we use most of the time when we look at vibration because what happens is that if you measure something at 600 CPM, the response will be the same as at 60,000 CPM. So we call it linear response, but the linear response stays stable across the widest frequency range. So that's why we use velocity as our general tool. Most of the time we're always measuring velocity because a measurement at 600 CPM will be the same as at 60,000 CPM. If I measured a 60,000 uh, CPM vibration in displacement at a low speed, I wouldn't get very much signal. So instead of, might give you a little line like that. But if I measured it in acceleration at the higher, it would give you the full response, okay? So same thing would happen if I measured in displacement at a very high speed. The response that my accelerometer would get wouldn't be that much, so I wouldn't be getting a true indication of what that vibration is. So speed is what dictates whether you measure in displacement, whether you measure in velocity, or whether you measure in acceleration. That's a great explanation. Uh, thanks again, Paul, for taking the time to walk us through some of these concepts. Uh, next week, what we're going to be looking at is the small bearing spikes or spike energy. Paul referred to it a little bit. And then we're also going to look at um, severity. So we're going to look at some severity charts and, um, and the relationship between acceleration, velocity, displacement, and uh, the RPM or the CPM of the machine and kind of tie the last two weeks together to uh, measure its severity.